Quite often as membership owners, we're always buzzing around trying to find the latest thing that's working well for marketing our membership. However, for all the jazzy new tactics, for all the fancy new platforms, the tips, the tactics, and all that sort of stuff, there are some core universal truths of membership marketing that never change. And I'm going to share what those are in just a sec. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to episode 305 of the Membership Guys podcast. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you're new to the show, make sure that you hit that subscribe button because you are not going to want to miss a single weekly episode of proven practical tips and advice on growing a successful membership business. (laughs) That sounded so cheesy and so radio rehearsed. Uh, If you are a regular listener, thank you so much for hanging with me again this week. If I could ask a teeny tiny little favor, if you have a minute or two spare, I would love it if you could take that time to leave us a nice five-star review, preferably those five shiny stars, on your podcast app of choice, letting me know just a little bit about what you like about the show, how the show has helped you. I would so appreciate it. First of all, it's so, so gratifying to know that we are helping people and to know that we're doing a good job. But also, the more reviews we get, the more iTunes and the like will ensure that people just like you find people just like us so we can help more membership owners to achieve that freedom, flexibility and fulfillment that comes from this wonderful industry. All right, begging over if you do leave me a review by the way hit me up on twitter at membership guys or on instagram at membership guy because it's just me callie's callie's doing her own thing on the gram so hit me up on one of those just to let me know that um you've done me a solid and so i can thank you personally for uh for your review for your feedback all right that's it we're done no more begging we're going to talk about membership marketing in particular 12 universal truths of membership marketing that are unshakable, immovable. These are forever eternal. These things do not change. Marketing is one of those dynamic areas where there's always something evolving, something changing, something new. But there's some core principles that are steadfast, that they remain true no matter what else is going on. The first of those is that there is no silver bullet, there is no magic pill, there is no one guaranteed tip or tactic or tool that is going to deliver the success that you're seeking from your membership. This is something people seem to be constantly chasing. The amount of times we see people asking, what's the number one thing I should be doing to market my membership? What's the best way to get new members? What way can I guarantee that I will hit this target or that my marketing will work there are no guarantees there is no silver bullet there is no one size fits all tactic strategy or approach that is going to guarantee success in the membership world or indeed in anything however unfortunately in the online space in particular there are a lot of snake oil salesmen whose entire sales strategy is based around convincing you that they have the silver bullet. They've got those magic beans, that their proven system, their signature strategy is the guaranteed answer. Just need to trust the process. And so obviously, the existence of those kind of snake oil, let's not call them snake oil salesmen, let's just call them straight up snakes. The existence of those snakes in the online business space unfortunately perpetuate this idea that there is one magic button somewhere and you just need to find it. You just need to buy the right course, buy the right program, listen to the right podcast episode. There is no silver bullet. There's no guarantees. There's no one thing that will work for your business. So that is the first universal truth of membership marketing. There's all sorts of things that you can try. There's all sorts of tactics. There's 
all sorts of things that consistently do work well within the space and we talk about them a lot on this show and over at themembershipguys.com but nothing's guaranteed what works for one person doesn't always work for another make sure that you're not falling into the trap of chasing that silver bullet of trying to find that one perfect marketing strategy that one way of doing your facebook ads that one perfect sales page design that's guaranteed to double your member signups they don't exist all right that's universal truth number one there is no silver bullet number two is probably as close as you're going to get to a silver bullet (laughs) and that is that deeply understanding your audience is the ultimate marketing hack so it's not a magic a magic bullet, it's not a silver bullet, it's not you know a guarantee of anything, but in terms of there being one thing that you should be doing in order to make everything else easier, in order to cut through a lot of the nonsense and being able to ga- gain that clarity and that focus on what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, it is gained through deeply understanding your audience, spending time listening to them, researching what they need, what they're into. If you can speak your audience's language, if you can truly understand what drives them, frustrates them, motivates them, keeps them up at night, scares them, excites them, if you can understand that, then you can better serve them and you can better market to them. So if there is one thing that everyone should do to laser focus their marketing strategy, and to put them in a stronger position, as strong a position as possible, to ensure that they're putting out the right message, the right people at the right time, that their marketing is fine-tuned in a way that gives them a better chance of success. It is by investing time and resources into deeply understanding your audience. So universal truth number two, deep understanding of your audience is the ultimate marketing hack. Universal truth three, attracting the wrong members will kill retention memberships are the long game they're a marathon not a sprint they're not about just getting a sale at any cost you need to make sure you're bringing the right people into your membership so that not only do you get that initial sale from when they first sign up but they stay for months and years and you get that sale month after month year after year you get that recurring revenue And that only comes if you are bringing the right people into your membership. And that relates to how you market. If you're using cheap gimmicks, if you're using false scarcity, if you're lying, if you're manipulating, if you're, you know, incentivizing people to join in the wrong way, you know, join my membership and we'll give you a free iPad. My 20 bucks a month membership will give you a free iPad. It's not about just getting as many upfront sales as possible. You need to make sure that you're bringing the right people into your membership so that they are more likely to stick around month after month, year after year. Your membership cannot be sustained on one-off short-term sales. This isn't like selling courses. This isn't like selling eBooks or other one-and-done products, single-serve products, where getting the sale is the finish line. With a membership, getting the sale is the starter pistol. It's not enough just to get that initial sale. It needs to be the beginning of a long-term customer relationship. And so your marketing needs to reflect that. This is why we always say market like a farmer, not a hunter. Market in a way that sets you up for sustainable, long-term member relationships. Not focusing just on the short term and trying to get sales at all costs, regardless of whether they're joining for the right reasons, whether they're the right fit. Attracting the wrong members will kill retention. Universal truth number four, platforms change, but strategy remains. There's new platforms coming out all of the time to factor into your marketing. There's social media sites coming in and out of fashion, tactics becoming in vogue and old hats. The risk is that you get too caught up in the specific platform that you're using and not the bigger picture strategy that you're following. Because platforms will change all of the time, but your core strategy will rarely do the same. But far too often people put the platform that they're on ahead of the actual strategy that should be behind their use of these different tools, these different platforms, these different social media sites or marketing outlets. And you can see it right now with Clubhouse. Right now, that's the one channel everyone seems to be talking about. 
If you're listening to this episode in 2023, because, you know, a lot of the episodes we do on the Membership Guys podcast, they're not time specific. They're not, they're, they're evergreen. So you could be listening to this episode in 2023, chuckling away to yourselves about how irrelevant Clubhouse was. You remember that six months where everyone loved Clubhouse and then we moved on to the next thing? Clubhouse might be irrelevant in your insane future world. Who knows? But what you see now and what you see every time that a hot new marketing platform comes out is people will flock to it and they'll put all of their attention into trying to figure out how they can adapt their marketing strategy to fit this new platform. When in truth, it should be the other way around. It shouldn't be, how should my business use Clubhouse? It should be, is using Clubhouse aligned to my core marketing strategy? Is dedicating time to Clubhouse a more effective tactic for achieving our larger long-term strategic marketing goals than the other things we're doing right now? There's nothing wrong with keeping on top of all the different platforms and tools that come out, but you need to make sure you keep your eye on the ball. You keep your eye on the bigger picture in terms of your marketing strategy and indeed your overall business strategy, and you don't get too caught up with shiny objects. I'm seeing people who first start getting involved in using Clubhouse in order to use it as a platform to promote their personal brand. And so they would run discussions and run groups talking about their topic. But now they're running groups talking about how to run Clubhouse groups, how to be a better Clubhouse moderator. That's an example of failing to use the platform to serve your strategy and instead changing your strategy to serve the platform. You can't do that because platforms like this, they change fast. But strategy, best practices, big picture changes slower. So universal truth number four. Truth number five, quality trumps quantity throughout every stage of your funnel, every stage of your business. It's better to have 100 highly engaged people on your email list who hang on your every word, who open every email, click every link, buy everything you offer them, then have 100,000 people who could not give a stuff about you, who filter your emails out, who never open them, and when they do, they don't click anything. And if they do click something, they don't spend much time on the page, they don't buy what you're offering, they don't engage with you, they don't care, they're just on your list because five years ago you were running a contest for giving away an iPad, giving away an iMac to anyone who you know put in their email address to your contest page. And you somehow thought that the fact that this gives you a big list means that you're now equipped to actually build your business on the back of it. Quality trumps quantity. Same goes for traffic to your website, same goes for Twitter followers, same goes for number of likes on your Instagram posts. All of this stuff, if it's not turning into something, if it's not generating true engagement, if it's not generating sales, it means nothing. Again, I'm going to pull out Kevin Kelly's thousand true fans. You want a thousand true fans instead of a hundred thousand people who barely care, who barely notice. Other than giving you some vanity metrics to throw around, there's no benefit to chasing big numbers at any cost. So focus on quality, quality leads, engaged followers, people who buy, people who engage, people who connect with you, not just people who make up the numbers in your vanity metrics. Marketing truth number six, build it and they will come does not work. Field of Dreams was a great movie, terrible business strategy contained within. And in fairness, you know, it didn't position itself as a business and marketing field guide. However, you do see a lot of people thinking that if they just create a great product, then it'll sell itself. Very rarely does that actually happen. And so just putting your head down, building your website, creating content, and then thinking, well, stuff like growing my audience, stuff like researching my marketing to ensure I I understand my audience's needs, stuff like coming up with a, a plan for launch and for marketing, all of that we'll do later. We'll build the product first and then we'll take care of all that later on because this product is going to be so amazing. This membership is going to be so incredible that I just need to get it built and all that other stuff is less important. We see so many people taking that approach and they spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resource, a lot of effort into creating what is, you know, on the surface, an incredible membership 
functions really well, lots of great content, loads of bells and whistles, everything designed nicely. They open the doors to that membership, they take it to market, and nothing. Nothing happens. Crickets. Crickets riding on the back of tumbleweeds across a desert of never-ending despair. That's, <laughs> that's an extreme visual, but it's what happens. Because just building the thing and expecting people to flock to it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You need to have a market to sell to. You need to understand that market's needs. Otherwise, you're building for you, not for them. You need to have a plan on how to take things to market, how to compel people to put their hand in their pocket and buy from you. And all of this stuff needs to come far earlier in the process than a lot of people place it. You need to be focusing on all of those things, researching that market, building that audience, building anticipation and excitement, making sure that the product you're creating is actually tailored to the needs of your audience so you have a solution to their problems. Trusting that all you need to do is create something that's great and then when you launch it, somehow people's spidey senses will just go off and they'll just automatically detect that there's an incredible membership out there. Now, does not work like that. Build it and they will come. Simply doesn't work. All right, truth number seven is that we are all in the business of solving problems and this should inform your marketing. Whether you're a coach, an artist, a fitness instructor, a music teacher, a web designer, business consultant, whatever it says in your business card, whatever it says on your website, each and every one of us, when you strip that away, each and every one of us is in the business of solving problems. People don't join memberships to stand still. They don't join just for the fun of it or of benevolence. They join because they have a problem that they need solving. They have somewhere they want to get to, a goal they want to reach, a transformation they want to undergo. And at the heart of everything that we do in business, in marketing, in running a membership, that is our job, to be the person who solves those problems, who affects that change, who gets people from where they are now to where they want to be. And the way that you make your membership essential is to solve the most pressing problems in the most direct way you need your membership to be a painkiller and not a vitamin it needs to be a must-have and not a nice to have and that should be central to your marketing this is why you need to understand your audience deeply because you need to know what keeps them up at night what their obstacles are what their challenges are where they want to be why they're not there yet and where your membership fits what is their problem how is your membership the solution? And how do you connect the dots? That is going to be central to how you market your membership and how you make it compelling and essential, not a nice to have, not expendable. So that is marketing truth number seven. We're all problem solvers. Number eight, you should never market on price. Pricing is, of course, a major factor in your marketing strategy, but it should not be the focal point. As soon as the buying decision becomes about your customers assessing price rather than assessing value, you're in trouble. And so if your competitive edge is solely based on your pricing, being the cheapest, being the most affordable, then all someone needs to do to beat you is to be cheaper. And so it very quickly becomes a race to the bottom. Never market your membership on price alone. Universal truth number nine is that in marketing and in business, trust is currency. Great quote from Bob Berg, the author of The Go-Giver, who wrote, With all things being equal, people will do business with people they know, like and trust. Know, like, and trust. How many times have you heard those three words when it comes to business, when it comes to marketing? This is super important for memberships because, as we said before, memberships are not just a one-and-done deal. It's not about just getting that initial sale. When someone joins your membership, you're starting a relationship that you hope lasts for months and years. And so trust is absolutely central to that. You need people to trust that you are the right person to solve their problems, that you are credible, that you have expertise, that they can put their faith in you 
to deliver on what you're promising within your marketing. And this is why in the last episode, episode three or four, when we were talking about the sort of terrible advice that you find in the membership marketing world, we highlighted the importance of actually having that period where someone can develop that trust before they join where they can consume your content. They can get to connect with you and know your voice. And again, build that relationship, build that trust, build up that faith that you are the person who can help them achieve their goals, to solve their problems, who can be with them as they work towards a transformation, towards wherever it is they want to go. That trust is currency. And so this is why we love things like content marketing, where you get to actually showcase and demonstrate that you're credible, that you have expertise. It's why I love podcasting as a medium, because you can hear my voice. And you can probably, I'm not a very good liar, so you can probably tell if I was lying to you. But you can form your own judgment about me from the content you consume, from listening to me, from hearing my voice in your head. And when you couple that with showing up in other places, with delivering what we promise from the products we sell, from the episodes we put out, from the freebies we give away, the free resources we give away, combined with our selling practices, our marketing practices, you know, testimonials and feedback and reviews and all of that sort of stuff, all of that hopefully will help to demonstrate you can trust me, you can trust us to be your guides, to be the people you choose to learn from to be the people whose membership that you join. That trust is such a powerful component when it comes to marketing your membership. Shouldn't be manipulated, shouldn't be treated glibly, it shouldn't be taken for granted either. But your marketing approach, your sales strategy can only benefit from doing things that build and develop trust between you and your audience. So universal truth number nine, trust is currency. All things being equal, People will do business with people they know, like, and trust. Truth number 10, don't use any marketing tactics you'd be ashamed to use on your own mother. I've got to make a confession with this one. That's not the quote. That That's meant to be a quote. I saw something on Twitter um, a while ago which encapsulated this this notion, this idea, um, very, very well, and it was, it was written in a way similar to what I just said, don't don't market in a way that you you wouldn't want your mother marketed to. It was something like that, but I can't find the blooming quote. I'm, I'm convinced it was Joe Paluzzi from Content Marketing Institute. It might be Joe Polish from I Love Marketing. I'm sure it was a Joe, right? <laughs> so this is this is where, you know, professional my professional podcast host falls apart a little bit. Because I still want to include this even knowing that I'd have to do a whole thing telling you that, you know, there's there's a really good quote, there's a really good way of descri- of encapsulating what I'm talking about here, but I, I don't know what it is and I forgot it and I forgot to write it down. But <laughs> the, the idea that you should not market in a way that if your mom was to call you up and say, oh, you know, I spoke to this guy, he was trying to sell me this thing and he did X, Y, and Z. You want to market in a way where if someone did that, your your parents, to someone you cared about, you wouldn't be outraged if you heard about it. So if any part of your marketing depends on you not getting caught out or relies on your audience's ignorance or involves pulling the wool over someone's eyes, then just don't do it. If at any point you're thinking, how can we do this? How can we do this subtly? How can we, you know, give new members... 50% off their membership without our existing members finding out and being unhappy. If you even venture into those kind of thought processes when it comes to marketing your membership, then you're going in the wrong direction. And that is a universal truth principle, whatever you want to call it. So while I butchered in the execution, hopefully I've salvaged it in the explanation. <laughs> don't use any marketing tactics you'd be ashamed to use on your own mother. Or don't use any marketing tactics you'd be paid off if someone else used on your own mother. At some point, if anyone knows what this quote was and who said it, hopefully I've given you the components of what it was. <laughs> Tweet me at membership guys. Um, and yeah, let me know what it was. But I don't know. Does that work on its own? Don't don't use any marketing tactics you'd be ashamed to use on your own mother. 
does that work? Yeah, it's just not it's just not as snappy a quote. Uh, yeah, myself and our team tried to find this quote. I'm pretty sure I didn't imagine it. Pretty sure I didn't dream it. Uh, but hopefully you get the point. If any, you should not market in a way where you're depending on ignorance or you're hoping you don't get caught out or you would be angry if someone marketed that way to your mother or grandmother or sister or daughter or son or whatever. Um, you get the point. So, yeah, I think we should move on from this one because, uh, yeah, it's a little rough around the edges, but it's true. It is absolutely true and more true for membership owners because, again, this is a recurring theme because it'll destroy that trust that we just talked about. And also, again, when looking for people to be with us for the long term. And so if you're just, you know, going for the sales at any approach, hit and run, selling one of products and then moving out of town or moving on the next thing, um, then you can get away with more. You shouldn't want to get away with anything in your marketing, but you could get away with more when you're selling one of products. When it comes to memberships, there's nowhere to hide. Because if you use some dodgy methods to get people into your membership site and they come into your membership and they realize they've been duped, okay, well, then they're going to leave. And what have you gained? You've gained one month's worth of payment that you'll probably need to refund. And even if it's not as obvious right away that you've done something dodgy, they'll figure it out at some point. If they're with you for months and months, they'll figure out whatever it is you've done that you shouldn't have done in your marketing, whatever it is you you know, lied about, whatever dodgy deal that you did for them that you didn't do for other people. This stuff will come out when you have a business that relies on long-term customer relationships. So if any part of your marketing depends on not getting caught, not getting found out, then you're doing it wrong. So that's truth number 10. <laughs> who knows, I might, come, I might figure out who did the quote and then edit it to make myself sound less idiotic. But you get the picture, right? Universal truth of membership marketing number 11. It doesn't matter how great your product is if you're unable to market it effectively. If you can't connect the dots between what someone needs and what you've got, if you can't compel people to action, to put their hand in their pocket and pay you to solve their problems, you can't connect those dots, then it doesn't matter how great your product is, you're not going to succeed. An average product that has great marketing will beat a great product that has average marketing. Should it be that way? No, it absolutely shouldn't. I always like to talk about the steak and the sizzle. There's a lot of people who are all sizzle. They're all about the marketing. They're all about appearances. They're all about the effects of a great product without necessarily having that phenomenal steak at the middle of it all. We like to be good steak and good sizzle, but Got to admit, there's some people out there who are incredible at the sizzle and it distracts from the fact that their product is bang average. You see endless examples of that around the world. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. If you are not capable of compelling your audience to buy, then it doesn't matter if your product is phenomenal, if it is the absolute best solution to their most pressing, most painful problems, you can't make them realize that you can't connect the dots, then you're going to struggle. And that is a universal truth of marketing. Final universal truth of membership marketing is that happy members are your best marketing asset. Forget all the different tricks and tactics that you might use to try and generate sales. The most compelling thing, the strongest marketing asset that you have or your members. If you're getting members results, if you're helping them get to where they want to go, they love being part of your membership, then those members will go out there and spread the word. And that is worth far more than what you're saying. What someone else says about you is worth so much more than what you say about yourself. Demonstrating that you are actually making a change in people's lives. Showing that there is an end product, an end result that people are getting from their involvement with you. That is gold. That advocacy is so, so powerful. 
happy, successful members who are getting results, they're getting wins, they will give you recommendations, they'll make referrals, they'll become affiliates, they'll go out there and be part of your marketing army. And they'll equip you with marketing assets that you can use. They'll write reviews, they'll give you testimonials, they'll take part in case studies that you can then take and put in to your marketing activity. Again, to demonstrate the results, to focus the conversation, focus the attention around what other people say about you instead of just you singing your own praises. And all of this fuels what we call the membership marketing flywheel, which is by far the most effective strategy, high-level strategy for marketing and online membership. The membership marketing flywheel is something that's central to our own success with Membership Academy, which is it's a multi-million dollar membership all because of the membership marketing flywheel. We have an entire course for Academy members that teaches the membership marketing flywheel. So if you're part of the Academy and you haven't watched the flywheel course, you need to watch that and look for ways to implement this within your own membership. It's the backbone of successful memberships. This flywheel is all about attracting people into your world, engaging them, building that trust we talked about, getting them on your email list, getting them into your membership, And then look at what comes next. And that's what so few people do or so few people think about when it comes to marketing and membership. They don't think beyond the sale. But for the membership marketing flywheel to work, you need to think beyond the sale. Because when you blow your members away with an awesome member experience, with delivering results, with helping them get wins, achieve what they joined your membership to achieve, then that turns those members into advocates who bring more people into your world, who you engage with, you get on your email list, you get into your membership, you blow them away, they become advocates, they go out, they spread the word, they bring more people in, get them on your list, get them in the membership, blow them away, they bring more people, and this becomes this self-driven flywheel where your happy members, your successful members, are actually the fuel that drives the continued growth of your membership. And this is why you need to think and to market beyond the sale, specifically for membership sites. Happy members are your best marketing asset, and that is a universal bona fide truth of marketing memberships. All right, there you have a 12 universal truth of membership marketing. There is no silver bullet. However, deep understanding of your audience is the ultimate marketing accelerant. Attracting the wrong members will kill retention. Platforms change, but strategy remains. All these new fancy things coming out, it's all well and good, but your strategy should be the bedrock of everything. Quality trumps quantity throughout every stage of your marketing funnel. Build it and they will come simply does not work as a marketing or a launch strategy. Number seven, we're all in the business of solving problems. Whatever the label on your business card is, ultimately you're a problem solver and that needs to be central to how you market and run your membership. Number eight, you should never, ever market on price. Quickly becomes a race to the bottom. Number nine, trust is currency. All things being equal, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. Number 10, don't use any marketing tactics that you'd be angry if someone used on your own mother or a quote similar to that. (laughs) Number 11, an average product with great marketing will beat a great product with average marketing. Shouldn't be the case, but it is. Finally, happy members are your best marketing asset. They will be the fuel that drives your membership marketing flywheel, and that flywheel is what will make your membership grow for months and years on end. All right, Hope you found this episode useful. Hope you found some uh, of the tips insightful. I hope it's given you a little bit of clarity, a little bit of a direction, a little bit of focus on what is important within your membership marketing strategy. That is it from me. I'm out of here and I'll be back again next week with another installment of the Membership Guys podcast.